Hello everyone, Mimikens here. Today I'm going to be covering the latest events in Monster Hunter World. We have the returning Autumn Harvest Fest held in the Astera Gathering Hub, available to everyone, and the new Fun Fright Fest in Seliana Gathering Hub, available to those who have Iceborne. There are many exclusive items to collect during this time, specific to each fest, as well as various new and returning event quests. These events are running between Friday the 16th of October to Thursday the 5th of November. Make sure you log in each day during the event to collect a login bonus of extra lucky vouchers, autumn harvest tickets and harvest fireworks. If you have Iceborne, you will also get Fun Fright tickets and Snowmen. There's also sales at the facility, special meal platters and extra rewards at the Steamworks. I have managed to get so many jewels I needed from the Steamworks during these fest events. Also, if you've been away from the game for a while, the jewel melding options at the Elder Melder have been expanded with new jewels and ones that were quite core to some builds such as Guard Up. The Autumn Harvest Fest held in Astera Gathering Hub, you will need to zone in to unlock some of the following items. The Limited Time Handler's Mischievous Dress, this is only available during the event unless you purchase it from the cash shop. A guild card pose and background. Poogie's outfit called Pumpkin's Revenge. I love this outfit, especially the cute little purple butterfly that keeps landing on his nose. With harvest tickets you get each day, you can purchase the harvest set. There's a high rank and a low rank version. A few pieces may be useful if you have the base game. I think I used the waste on a bow build before, however, if you have Iceborne, you probably won't use any of it and it's just a collection piece. It does have slightly different colour scheme for the layered armour. The armours have a yellow inline while the layered has purple. When I got this armour it was a delivery quest but they've since moved layered armours to the smithy. This is one of the outfits I actually think male characters have a better design for. As for your palco you can craft the ghost set. There's a high rank and low rank version in the base game. You can craft using one autumn harvest ticket each part. However, if you have Iceborne, you can use Harvest Tickets along with the Fun Fright Tickets to craft a Master Rank version. It's a cute outfit and of course Dee recommends you craft it. She's currently wearing the body weapon with the Rose headset to be dressed up as a spooky doll. Although she says she likes pumpkin head but just wanted to stand out for trick or treating. I have been working on a high rank event guide for base game players along with additions that Iceborne players will probably want as well for some unique designs. However, the next set of items in this video are only for Iceborne players. The Fun Fright Fest is the Iceborne celebration held in the Celiana Gathering Hub. This one is completely new for everyone. Here's the guild card pose and title you can get from participating in the event. The main tickets from this event are Fun Fright tickets and VIP Fun Fright tickets. You can also dress your handler up in this outfit during the event but you'll need to buy the DLC if you want it as a permanent feature. If you zone into both gathering hubs during the fest, you can pick whichever costume you prefer. Little Poogie has an outfit to collect. The Spectral Swine, available during this event to add to your collection. The Frankie set for your palco. This is super cute and if you look closely you can see your palco's face inside the opening mouth. I love that the little patches are cat themed. Even the little ball and chain weapon has cat ears and glowing eyes. The Demon Lord armor set for your hunter. This pales in comparison to the Fatalis endgame armor but you will still want to farm the complete set to increase your chances of obtaining VIP tickets. These drop at the end of hunts from SOS groups to even short gathering quests. I do have a guide on the channel with some short quests I like to complete if you're interested. You'll need 5 of the VIP tickets to craft the Demon Lord Laird Armor. I love this design and prefer it way more to the frumpy pumpkin outfit from the Autumn Harvest Fest. 
This can be mixed and matched with other armors to create a more unique style. The male version is pretty amazing as well. I love the glowing eyes and the general design of the costume. I really do wish they'd added a female version of this as well. I think these new Fun Fright Festa layered armors have to be in my top 5 favourites. You can unlock pendants for your weapon. The first one requires 3 Fun Fright tickets. Then you can get additional colours from the VIP tickets costing 2 each. These are more of an effect rather than a pendant hanging off your weapon. There's also various decor you can get for your room. I decided to change up my theme to a more spooky vibe. If you've seen my previous videos, you know my room is usually bright pink blue with cutesy plushies everywhere. Well, today is my dark castle. The room decor you can get ghostly fun fright ornaments. Glowing fun fright ornaments. The rugs here are actually from the Resident Evil collaboration event, but I think they look perfect for this setup. This Fun Fright cloth for your wall. A Fun Fright stooge. A Fun Fright platter for your table. While this isn't creepy, it does look delicious and I can tell the Palicos definitely had a hand in making it. A pumpkin lantern for your bedside table. Fun Fright pumpkins which can sit on shelves or tables. And a Fun Fright snowman. I also had some spooky looking endemic life which I added to complete the look. As for event, there's a couple of new ones as well as returning older ones. New ones include Kadachi Twins drop scarf tickets used to make the fluffy Kadachi scarf layer armour. This is really cute design and uses the layered head slot, you can change the colour of the fluff. Tears from Nirvana drops blank bandanas used to craft the skull scarf layered armour. Mighty Muscle Monkey Madness. This drops buff ticket pluses to craft the buff body gamma layer armour. I've never seen my character look so muscular. You can dye the skin of this layered armour from pasty white to oiled up tanned up bodybuilder. The place where winter sleeps. This is a fight against an arch tempered volcano dropping volcano tickets, which can be used to craft the Rhyme Guard Gamma Armor. This armor has a lot of skills and slot options. I do see it being useful in certain builds, even with the juicy stats that Fatalis armors offer. You can craft the weird Volcana Gamma Armor. As well as getting the final level on the Master's Charm for Critical Eye taking it to level 5 and also the Earplug Charm to level 5. That's a full set of earplugs in just the charm slot. A farewell to Zenogre. This drops Zenogre tickets which are used in conjunction with other items to craft a whole range of layered armors. You'll need Zenogre tickets combined with the other event items usually required for crafting the armor. For instance, the Clockwork Laird armor set uses the Nogra tickets as well as Steam tickets which you get from the Steamworks. You can craft both the Alpha and Beta versions. The Wyvarian Ears Laird Head. The Pearl Spring Laird Head. Leon from Resident Evil's Laird Armor. This one has to be worn entirely in order to achieve the desired appearance. In addition, this quest drops giant dragon vein coal used to create extra fuel at the steamworks. Fade to black, this one has been out for over a week but mentioning it since it's new since my last event video. It's a fight against the legendary black dragon Fatalis. You'll need to complete the special assignment in order to unlock this. It's running until the end of the year. His drops are amazing, top tier weapons, armour and upgrading charms. I got a video on the channel showcasing his equipment. 
There's also the USJ Master Rank Event Quest Shine On Forever for the Azure Star Lord set and Azure Era Palco equipment, as well as the Belly of Frost for the Azure Age Armor set and upgrading the bow. Both these quests have overlapping materials from the older high rank USJ quests, which I've explained in more detail in another video. So if you haven't got these yet, feel free to check it out. There's also Master Rank Kul Tarth, which is available until the 23rd of October. Then it's being rotated out to make way for the Safi Jiva Siege for the second half. I have guides on YouTube for both these events if you need them. I'm just including my Master Rank events that were in the last video for people who may have missed out. It contains all the unique items you can farm from events. The Frostfang Barrieth, who was first available on the 7th of August, he has two armor sets which are viable for endgame as well as many ice-based weapons to collect. I have a video up on YouTube with a full armor and weapon showcase. I will leave links in the description. The Evening Star and the Dawn of the Death Star, these are fights against the Latrian and the alternate daily. This quest is running till the end of the year, currently it is the only way to initiate a fight against the Latrian after defeating him in the special assignment. He also drops a lot of top end equipment and weapons. If you would like to know more about this, please check out my Latrian Made Easy video, which showcases all the rewards and builds I found useful. There are other returning events which you should collect, some have new lured versions available. Fetching Light Pearls. Complete this quest to get herbivore tickets to create the Pelby Laird Armor Head. Skyward Snipers. This quest you can get Downy Creek Ticket 2s to make this adorable Downy Creek Laird Armor. A fish to whet your appetite. Complete this quest to get special materials for making the wet fish saber jewel blades. You can also use a ticket to use this as a layered weapon. Camouflage. This quest drops herbivore tickets used to make Aptonoth layered armor. Seeing is believing. Completing this quest to get spirited canteen tickets for making some frothy jewel blades. There's also a weird weapon option if you just want the appearance. The Assassin. This quest allows you to upgrade the Assassin's Hood. Don't forget the earplugs, you need 3 pilot hair tickets from this quest to craft the hairband weird armor. Monkey Business. 3 gold spring tickets from this quest will let you make this super cute gold spring weird armor. The Naked Truth. This quest drops materials for the lightweight inner wear, alpha and beta layered armor, for those times you want to look pro while fighting with no armors on. The Distant Dark Tide. This is a fight against the arch-tempered Namiel. It drops gamma armor as well as several layered armor options. Feel free to check out my Namiel video if you want more information about the fight and rewards. The Eternal Gold Rush. This quest is available after unlocking the World Quest Banquet in the Earthen Hall. This unlocks the Kul Tarth Master Rank Armor which has the free meal secret. Level 3 free meal is amazing for saving consumables. The overall set although may not be the best DPS, it offers a lot of extra utility and quality of life which makes it enjoyable to use. The materials in this quest can also be used to upgrade all of the high rank Kul Tarth and Kiar weapons. Flora Frostbite, this drops Wyvarian tickets that you can use to craft yourself a pair of Wyvarian ears. Beef is never a mistake, drops meaty canteen tickets, you will need three to craft yourself this juicy well done hammer. Fifty Shades of White drop fest tickets which can be used to craft a variety of weapons. There is one for each type with a unique model, here are all the weapons you can get from the tickets.
A shocking climate drops unity symbols. These can be used to craft new items such as the space guard hammer, as well as upgrading some of the previous event items into master rank versions. You will need the base item from the high rank event quests if you don't already have them. I'm happy to see some of my favourites returning to master rank. This quest also allows you to get things for your Palco. There is a Master Palco Mega Man set, a Master Rank version of the Moogle set from the Final Fantasy XIV collaboration, a Master Rank Necker set from the Witcher collaboration, this adorable little Conductor Palco outfit, known as the Maestro set. The classic Palico set from the original Monster Hunter. This doesn't come with a headpiece, but you can equip any other head with it. Pearl Snatchers. This drops Pearl Spring tickets used to make this very cute Pearl Spring headgear. I love this and it even blinks. Trophy Fishing. Drops freezer tickets. You need five in total to craft this very unique greatsword. Who can resist smacking a monster over the head with a giant frozen fish? Every Hunter's Dream 2 drops Wiggler Pots which are used to craft your Palco the Wiggler set. Make sure you check out Dee's video showcasing this fabulous armour. Duffel Duty, this drops Penguin Tickets which you can use to craft the Duffel Penguin Mask. Every Hunter's Dream 3 drops Black Eagle Blueprints. Five are needed to fully craft the Black Eagle Charge Blade Van Design Contest winner. You can also upgrade the Wyvern Ignition to Master Rank version using two tickets. Scores of Ores drops Pickaxe Tickets. You need three of them to craft this very unique Pickaxe Gong Sword. RE Return of the Bioweapon, this is the Resident Evil collaboration event, this drops star badges, there are a lot of nice items here, two armour sets, three pendants, items for your room as well as some gestures. Check out my video regarding this one for more information. A chilling entrance drops items to craft the sealed dragon cloth, I love this design and it has a very anime feel to it. It reminds me of Strider, which is another character owned by Capcom who has appeared in various mangas and games over the years. There are three exclusive event quests for the PS4 which contain a lot of unique items based on the Horizon Zero Dawn franchise. I have made a detailed video on each quest showing off the many rewards as well as tips for the battle. I also explain where you can get the base materials to upgrade various parts. You need to complete the quest in order, so if you're on the PS4, start with my part 1 quest. Not sure if they'll open this up in the future to other formats, but the Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition was released on PC on the 7th of August this year. Muscle Monkey Madness drops buff tickets that you can use to craft the buff body armor. Thanks for watching, please support the channel by liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.